What is going on guys? Matt Downs with Daily Grind Fantasy Sports here to give you a Fantasy Cruncher tutorial video. My What my process really looks like in terms of stacking, finding those contrarian stacks with utilizing Fantasy Cruncher's optimizer and tools. Uh, it's a very simple process and a lot of people do it differently, but I'm a huge believer that ownership is everything. If you know the ownership of a player, you know the ownership of a team, you know the ownership of a stack, uh, it's a great way to start your process and it's a great way to get different. Uh, you can utilize ownership to get different. And what Fantasy Cruncher allows you to do is it allows you to find different places where you can get different. And I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, if you guys don't have Fantasy Cruncher Pro, first of all, the, the the very first thing that you can do is log on to our website, sign up for a membership, and you can get free ownership projections for $20 a month. Um, that's the one thing you can do. And then what you can do once you have those ownership projections is upload them as actual projections. So uh, I've done other videos on this, but you simply upload all the player names and then you upload uh, the projections, the, the ownership projections as physical projections. And then you can upload utilizing, using my projections. All right, so that's the first way you can do it if you don't have pro But if you do have pro the ownership projections are already uploaded here in the fantasy cruncher It makes it very very easy. All right, and the next thing I do is I utilize stacking This is the most simple way to force stacks game stacks um, And QB wide receiver tight end stacks into your settings I showed this in another video and you can also do it on the group tab But the video this video is specifically not for that so I won't go too far in depth there But the first thing I do is I, I set my stacks and then I head over to 500 lineups and I crunch 500 lineups because that's the that's the, the maximum amount that Fantasy Cruncher allows me to, to break down. I set my minimum salary to, let's say, 45,000. Um, and then I set my randomness to about 5,000. All right, before I crunch all my lineups, the reason I do this is because I want to see what the public is doing. Again, 5,000 randomness might be a little too aggressive, but it paints a really good picture once I crunch all my lineups, what the public is thinking and that's assuming that the public even stacks you have to keep in mind that a majority of the public are fish and they don't stack they just simply don't have the stacking settings they're, they're manually putting in their lineups so you're going to see correlated stacks here in all my lineups and that's not even what the public even does a, a majority of the public that is so you have a leg up on the competition there just for forcing a stack in general and then i like to see what stacks appear uh, the most and what stacks really don't appear in my lineups that much. So let's go ahead and crunch 500 lineups utilizing my uh, ownership projections or the, the ownership projections here on Fantasy Cruncher, whichever you are utilizing. And they have all crunched. And keep in mind, this is week one of 2021. So if you're watching this video later on in the season or even uh, a year in the future here, none of these ownerships will make sense but let's just take this and look at it contrarian stacks uh or, or should i say more popular stacks i'm gonna look through the board here it looks like the Bengals are going to be very chalky here in week one at least stacking them because their players are very cheap so joe burrow 5700 dollars joe mixon 62 t higgins 47 tyler board 50 tyler boyd $5,200. So that makes sense, even coming back here with Justin Jefferson. So all these players are relatively cheap, and that makes sense because, you know, they're the very high owned here. So a team you probably want to avoid, at least in bigger GPPs, is going to be the Bengals. Reason being is because they're going to be very heavily owned. Would you rather take a chance on a stack that's going to be 5 to 10% owned in GPPs when there's, you know, 24 26 teams playing on the slate or would you rather take a chance on the team that's very very low owned that has a better chance of hitting um at a very lower owner or very low ownership so that's my process when thinking about this the next highest owned looks like it's going to be new orleans um, they are also relatively cheap so if we take a look at these new orleans stacks it makes sense the logic behind it makes sense because there's Jameis winston 5200 dollars we have kamara who isn't that uh isn't that cheap, but he's a very good player, um, $8,600. And then this is where the, the stacks actually make sense. So they have Trotman at $2,900, just a plug and play there. And then Callaway, uh, number one wide receiver there for $3,400. So that makes sense. So it looks like the Bengals, the Saints are the are the highest owned. And if they don't make the optimal, you're looking at you know nearly 10 to 15% of ownership coming right off the board there. Um, if you fade these guys and they don't appear in the optimal. Whereas somebody like the CL Seahawks, we know historically is a good team, could be a very hard team to stack and make for very low ownership. It looks like only one single four-man stack appeared in my lineups here utilizing the Seahawks. 
Russell Wilson with Chris Carson, Lockett, and Metcalf. This is a bit aggressive, um, but you guys get the point. Utilizing all of my salary here, coming back with somebody like Thielen, and then paying down at uh, defense, getting Hawkinson very cheap in there, and also Callaway. So also paying down at the running back position. So it would make sense here to play the Seattle Seahawks and bigger GPPs because they don't have that much ownership. Again, looking at what the public is thinking. Okay, assuming that your ownership projections are very accurate. So as you can see, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's only ten four four man stacks. So there's even teams deeper than this. So it looks like the Cardinals are a very hard team to get to. So that might be a good team in, in big GPPs. All right, and we're looking at it here. Uh, it looks like we have Hopkins, Chase Edmonds, and it doesn't even look like Kyler Murray is in that stack. You want to look for Kyler Murray stacks because it looks like that's going to be a very hard team to to um, stack regardless this is my process on looking at teams that i am stacking in larger gbps small gbps medium-sized gbps and the one thing that we do at dg fantasy is we put the specific stacks in order on the specific contest you should be putting them in so for instance if i am doing my my cheat sheet for you guys right now i would simply say hey guys put the Bengals and the saints in smaller gbps only don't even bother putting them in medium to, to big GBPs. Um, I might say the same thing for Carolina. Going down the board, like Atlanta might be a medium-sized GBP, Buffalo, Jacksonville. But then once you get into those bigger GBPs, that's where we start to do the work for you. We list all of those teams that you should be utilizing, you should be putting in those contests. But that's that's pretty much it. That's my process. This is what I do. Roll over to my Fantasy Cruncher board, and I see what the public is thinking, and then I do the exact opposite. And this is only at 5,000%, and I'm only really getting you know, 10, 10 teams here at four man stack. So you might even want to get a little bit more aggressive. Uh, but yeah, uh, just wanted to pop on here, give a quick tutorial video. If you guys did enjoy this content, please do with that subscribe button, notification bell, and of course, smash that like button for all of our future NFL content. With all that being said, have a great rest of your day and let's cash.